very, very excited to have Jo from the Dog's Butcher with us today. She's got not only her own abattoir, but she's been making dog food for quite some time now. Started with only mum doing about 200 kilograms a week yep. to now almost between 12 and 20 tons. A week. Which is a week, <laughs> a week, which is pretty impressive. So um, there's been a lot of different, different sort of stories or perceptions or con uh, sort of misconceptions or beliefs that people have with uh, raw food feeding in dogs. And uh, today we're very, very lucky to have Joe to answer some of the questions that we have. So, um, Joe, welcome to the show. Hi, yeah. And uh, could you just tell me in your own words, you know, just tell me how do you start and where are you at right now? Right, about eight years ago, I went back to raw feeding my own dogs. I did raw feed them about 30 years ago, but there wasn't very, there was very little information around. So, mm. eight years ago, I did some research and I decided that I was going to go to my local abattoir mm. and source all the food for my dogs. So I started doing that. I went on to um, Bath UK, which is a forum on Facebook, and sort of learnt a lot about it. Um, a lot of local people that I know and met through Facebook were feeding raw, and they started asking me if I could do it for them. Mm. I, I couldn't, because I had a license to feed my own dogs. So I spoke to Defra and asked them if I could get a license to start producing. They said yes, they helped me with the license. I converted the garage, my husband converted the garage, and we started, uh, I think it was 2013, October the 13th we opened. Uh, I was there for six months and then we moved to another premises. Uh, I was there for three years and then we've been at the new premises for two years. So I've gone from, as you said, 200 kilos per week to between 12 and 20 ton per week. It has grown immensely. And I started a Facebook group and now we have 12,000 followers and I carry a food. I've got 75 pet shops and that's increasing by three this week. We've got three new ones around the country that stock our food. So yes. It's a very, very impressive growth. It is, but we have tried to go as slow as possible so that we're mm. reliable uh, and we only source mm. British food, so I'm trying to keep to to the original plans and designs I had for feeding my own dogs. So talk to us a little bit about Advantage. Why raw feeding? Because you know it's been feeding dogs has been ongoing for quite some time already. And, you know there's kibble and there's also different things on it. Why, why why raw feeding? Well, you notice within a couple of weeks the difference in your dog's coat for a start. <clears throat> Um, the shine on my dogs is amazing. One dog who's no longer with me, particularly when she was kibble fed, she had a coarse coat. And as soon as I started raw feeding, I couldn't believe the smoothness and the shine in her coat. She was amazing. Um, good, improved oral health, because you feed bones and big meaty chunks, which are really good for, uh, you know, clean teeth. Um, gut, it's brilliant. For, for dogs that have got allergies, it's brilliant. Um, you can see, and I've known people who've spent a lot of money on allergy, you know, food, um, medicines rather, because their dogs have got allergies. Within two weeks of feeding raw, the allergies have disappeared. Um, gut health, uh, you, if you can see, the amount of, if you compare a kibble poo to, or a tin dog food poo, to a raw fed poo, the difference is amazing. So the, the poo is very small. Um, there's not so much waste coming out the dog because they're utilizing all of the food. Um, it's very difficult to find if they do have a poo in the, le in the leaves in, in the autumn. It's very difficult to find a raw fed poo to take the truth, you have to hunt for it. Um, and it just, it's it, happy dogs, yeah. you know, happy dogs. They're just really happy and yeah, they love chewing bones and chewing meat. Mm -hmm. So just happy dogs, really. So I mean, awesome. I always, I've always said since I started this, I wouldn't want to eat cream crackers every day. <laughs> Fresh food, fresh food is brilliant for all of us. So same for dogs. 
Yeah, it does sound as though there's a huge amount of advantages in both the demenia, the health, and uh, what is uh, potentially even natural to feed them. Yeah. Um, why do you think there is so much? Uh, talk to us a little bit more about some common misconceptions that people have about raw food. Why? Why? Why isn't this much more obvious and bigger? It, well, it's get it's getting that way. But the two biggest misconceptions are my dog's going to be bloodthirsty. The amount of times I have heard my dog's going to be turned into a savage beast, when actually it's quite the opposite because. There are no additives in raw food. There are, because in, in dog food, to get a shelf life, they've always got to put additives, preservatives, which you wouldn't feed your children food with preservatives all the time. <clears throat> so they're a lot calmer. So they're not bloodthirsty. In fact, I have less problems feeding all my four dogs together now than when I fed them when they ate kibble. It was mad bad rush to get to get to the kibble and it was like looking around what, what's going on you know what, where is what, what's in that bowl but they are so much calmer now since being raw fed also bacteria in salmonella that's another big one now dogs eat cow poo sheep poo rabbit poo we're talking a lot about poo i'm sorry uh deer poo and each other's poo occasionally fair enough now, if you're going to be worried about salmonella and bacteria, then maybe a dog isn't the best pet that you should have. Because, you know, if you practice good hygiene practices as you do with any raw meat, clean your surfaces down, wash your hands, wash the bowls, then you really shouldn't have a problem with any salmonella um, from the food. But dogs will drink out of muddy puddles. That's why salmonella is in muddy puddles. Salmonella is in the soil. They roll in the, the mud. So salmonella is in a lot of places. It's not just raw food. So as I said, you know, dogs are full of bacteria, really. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, that's very, very true. Yeah. So in your... Um, in that case, you know, we talk about quite a lot of disadvantages and misconceptions, which are misconceptions. Yeah, yeah. Would you say that all raw food is good for dogs dogs not all dogs like raw food mm. there is a very small percentage that i've uh, turned over onto raw that the owners have said oh my dog's just not eating it there are always ways to try and encourage to, dogs mm. to eat raw food but some people just cook food for the dogs mm. they still want to see what their dogs are eating so they'll buy raw products from me and cook it which that isn't a problem they're getting still getting fresh food really um except for the bone content obviously mm. we always say do not feed any cooked bones don't matter where they come from whether they're pre-cooked mm. do not feed cooked bones um raw bones do not are not as brittle as cooked bones they're going to cause less problems than cooked bones you should always supervise a dog when eating bones anyway um but you, you would need to either, if you're gonna cook the food, you can um, get a calcium supplement. You need to get the balance right with calcium. You can't overdo calcium. Or you can feed crushed eggshells mm. as well. So, mm. but no, not all dogs like raw food. Mm. That's interesting, just to pull a little bit point about the bone itself. So you're talking about cooking. So it's the brittleness, the biggest concern. It is, definitely. Bone. When you cook sort a bone, it's a lot that's... brittle. Mm. You can get these big cooked bones in some pet shops and your dogs will chew on them. I mean, and a lot of these bones, <coughs> really, we don't say to feed dogs anyway. Mm. We don't say to feed big weight bearing bones to dogs unless mm. they're from chickens or a poultry, sure. which are hollow. Um, so yeah, and they're brittle. And if your dog just chew a bit off, and it's sharp, it's got a sharp shard on it, then you, you will you will get problems. Yeah. Okay, so um, what sort of tips have you got? So is let's let's pretend as a pet owner who actually wants to try sort of raw feeding. What sort of tips would you have for them to? How do I look for a supplier? Because there are more and more sort of raw feed companies out there. And what sort of points would they look at before they can say that okay right i'm not a, i'm not a supplier although i do supply to um retail 
I'm actually a producer. There are a lot of suppliers, people who just supply other people's food around the country. You really need to make sure that your the meat that you're buying from a supplier has got a DEFRA um, number on it. They have to be, we all have to be DEFRA registered. Um, you know, if you're, if you don't know anything about raw food, you speak to us, you need to speak to a supplier who knows what they're talking about. Not all suppliers do. Mm. So I think a really good way, first of all, if you're worried about feeding raw food, you don't know what to do, join a good forum, ask questions on there, mm. then find, and also on a lot of good forums, and I'm, I'm going to mention Bath UK again, they have got, um, a map, a Google map with every supplier in the country on it, and what what sort of food they sell, and they will only uh, they'll only be on their DEFRA registered suppliers. So it, you know it is a good idea that you can go and you can you know seek this information, go to your supplier, and ask questions. If they don't know the answers, then you either do your own you know yeah. research yeah. and just go there armed with knowing what you want to buy or um you want to find it's nice to have somebody that you can talk to sure so um and speak to your suppliers about your producers and maybe get in touch with the producers mm -hmm. you know people like me a lot mm -hmm. of people who actually i don't sell to mm -hmm. retail they're you know, they, my pet shops uh, sell them food. They come to me and ask questions because we are mm. always there for information mm. and advice. So I just mm. think you've got to be because raw food diet has got to be fed properly and mm. there are some bad people who don't feed it properly, mm. Mm. which is probably where a lot of vets see the end results of it not being fed properly as mm. well. Let's pretend somebody who is thinking of you know, feeding raw, they have heard their stories, they have heard the advantages. So for somebody who has got absolutely no idea of what is feeding raw food, like could you just talk to the, talk to them a little bit or talk to us a little bit about what do they expect at home? How do they keep the food? Where do they store the food? And uh, you know, the, the sort of misconceptions that sometimes bring fear to people who say that, no, I can't be doing raw food. Is it really, really that Yeah, difficult? it's messy. Yeah. yeah, I know. It's not actually. Now, nowadays, I mean, I think I was, first one to start this in the country country when I started feeding raw I thought um, when I started producing raw food I thought why do people feed kibble mm. and it's because it's easy now the raw diet that I follow the plan that I follow uh, we feed 80% meat we feed 10% bone we feed 5% liver and 5% another offal um, which is a secreting organ with dogs. It's not a uh, heart and tongue like offal for us. If it's a muscle, it's meat for dogs. I thought, what can I do? So I decided to combine the, this, these balances in different minces so that all you have to do is empty the packet, get a spoon. I mean, we, we uh, produce in uh, meat, where you like you go to Sainsbury's or anywhere and they are just trays you open the tray you get a spoon you can put it on a scales initially but by you you will learn to know how much of that tub that you need to feed your dog um, you spoon it out you put the lid back on or close it up put it in a um, container which is airtight and keep it in your fridge you don't need to have a separate fridge a lot of raw feeders buy a dog freezer. It all depends how many dogs you've got. If you've got a chihuahua, you won't need to. And you can store these containers in your freezer. If you wanted to put a plastic bag around them, if you were worried that that would be fine, but they are clean on the outside like you would, they would be if you went to Sainsbury's or and bought meat from Sainsbury's. Um, so you can actually refreeze dog food as well, which is, not not everybody knows that if it's kept cold it will keep once opened it will keep in the fridge for three days our food will um, but if some people they buy 
20 kilos at a time. They open everything. They prep their meals for the day because their dogs maybe only have 400 grams or 200 grams. They prep their meals for the whole week, two weeks, put them in little their own containers and put them back in the fridge, in the freezer. Mm. Obviously, you need to wash bowls every day. You need to wash your surfaces. You need to wash your hands after prepping raw food like you would if you bought a chicken and you opened a chicken. Mm. I mean, you can wear gloves and that might appeal to, to vegan feeders mm. or raw feeders or vegetarian raw feeders. We have lots of vegan raw feeders mm. and vegetarian raw feeders because they want to feed the dog an appropriate diet. So yes, it's, it's, it's not difficult it is if you've got more difficult if you've got four big dogs like I have. Um, they've got their own freezer. I mean, I have got quite a few freezers for them though. <laughs> but that when I used to do it all for myself, I used to have a dog freezer and a dog fridge mm. because I had so much food. I mean, I'm sure. feeding three, four kilos a day. Mm. So I had so much food and it mm. would take too much room. Mm. So you can put a, a freezer and a fridge in the garage. It's not a problem. Okay. I mean. Uh Thanks for that. And I've been around your facilities, pretty impressive, you know, from the front to the back. Thank you very much for yeah. showing me going to where the meat comes in, where it's prepared. I mean, yeah. the entire carcasses over there. I know. Uh, that's you know. Not un that is unusual for yeah. a raw food supplier. I don't, yeah. I mean, I wish somebody would tell me if I'm wrong, but there's not many raw food suppliers that buy a whole carcass. And we do because mm. it's quality that we're, in. you want to ensure quality. Mm. So we're very lucky though where we are. Um, and I use local abattoirs, so we buy food fresh every day from local abattoirs. But those local abattoirs also know a lot of farmers, and those farmers get in touch with me and um, and say to me, would you have my cool cattle or will you have my cool use? Because they don't like, they, they actually love their animals, they don't want to send them to market because these animals really shouldn't be bred from anymore. They've been bred from enough, they've done mm. their jobs. Mm. And they would much prefer that they're slaughtered locally and go into dog food than mm. um, be bought and bred from again and abused, basically. That's how mm. they look at it. Mm. So we are very lucky that we, we get lots of, of pigs. We get whole pigs, we get whole mm. lambs, we get whole venison, we get whole cows. Uh, it's called on the hook or on the hoof. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're on the carcass. So, mm. yeah, it's good quality I, food. I found it very, very fascinating. And uh, I suppose that is the sort of uh, leads me to the other question would be, apart from the whole carcass, which you say not many uh, not many producers do that. No, uh, I don't think they do. Yeah. What, other what, what other thing is that's different from what your setup is compared to other producers that you know? Well, um, we only buy anything that's British, it's got to be British. I mean, we, we've got to the stage now that we have to outsource and go to a, a meat merchant, but they know that um, it's got to be British food um, because we've got some of the best conditions in the country, in our abattoir, uh, in the world, in our abattoirs. There's always a vet present mm -hmm. and um, slaughter is, is uh, videoed, all the slaughters are videoed. Um, so that's one thing, I, I'm just an animal lover. And although this is a bit of a difficult thing, it was always a bit of a difficult thing for me to go to abattoirs and places like mm. that. Um, I want the animals to have uh, as good a life as possible and as quick a death as, as possible. So um, that, is, is, that is my unique selling point, I suppose. It, mm. it is British food uh, and as locally sourced as I possibly can, although I do have to outsource a little bit more now because we we are busier but it is all guaranteed to be british because i can trace mm. every every little bit that comes into it and we mm. also use a brilliant uh, poultry supplier creedy carver i was just gonna you say know, that you know creedy carver yeah <laughs> they are brilliant and they are one of the best poultry suppliers in the country we also use another one now which is organic which is otter otter valley poultry so uh because we need more poultry we need more mm. duck and we need more chicken so we are, um, next year, we're hopefully getting our organic license. So okay. we, we will be able to um, produce organic and label it as organic. At the moment, I, I, I can label it as organically reared, but I can't just label it as organic. And we won't mm. be, like other suppliers do, mixing 
organic with non-organic. It mm. will be just an organic range, complete organic range. Mm. So what sort of um, challenges are you facing with the whole raw food industry? It is uh, <laughs> really difficult. Um, if I knew then what I know now, <laughs> I'd probably be selling other people's food. It is, you wouldn't believe the rules and regulations. It is more strict than butchers and um, people selling food for human consumption. The abattoir that we work from, it, it, it's, an, it's an old abattoir and um, it hasn't been a working abattoir for uh, 15 years, I think. Mm. And before we took it over, it was used for um, meat going into the human chain. And they used to have a butchers, an, an on-site butchers there. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it was produced for other people, uh, you know, small butchers, whatever. And when DEFRA did the first inspection, not, it's not suitable for raw dog food. So we had to spend quite a bit of money on it and we didn't think we would, but yeah, we did. Um, um, you know, and we, we do have, we do have DEFRA, um, visits and they always make you feel like a naughty school child because they always trying to pick fault with everything last time it was we had weeds growing out the back you wouldn't believe so <laughs> so um, misconceptions as well it's we do challenges from vets I mean I, I mean I, I'm not I don't want to bash vets because I'm talking to one anyway and he's a lovely one but no I I Vets are brilliant. I mean, they are there to, for the health of our dogs. You know, you if you get a dog that's sick or had an injury, you go to a vet. I'm constantly getting told that um, from customers that they are up, that they are having problems with their vets. And I've had one person who's actually said she, she's actually been refused. Um, vets uh, vets have refused to treat her dogs because wow. she's federal okay. she feeds raw not all vets like that thank god mm. and you know what there's yeah. a lot more more vets mm. that are you know getting interested in raw food now so i mean it's a good thing it's mm. it's you know really it's taken off in the last five years mm. and you know it's a lot to get your head around you know so That's, um yeah no i can totally appreciate it. i mean but but really i mean sourcing good quality food is going to be an uphill struggle for me but as soon as i've got a cut off point where i can no longer you know source any more good quality food and i'm worried about that it will be that's enough i'm not going to produce any more than i'm already producing so we'll have a level i'd like to expand on that just on two different points one is that so um being a vet myself, so mm -hmm. obviously I've been through the whole usual standard vet training yeah. and I work in practices whereby there are some dogmas and misconceptions about raw feeding and some not really because some vets, they do feed their dog raw, mm -hmm. and their, their pets raw. What would be your advice for vets who want to find out more about what is raw feeding about? Because I really, really think that a lot of it is either lack of information or miseducation. So I think it is just one thing to learn more about and we fear things that we do not know. No, but exactly. So what would be your advice for vets who want to learn more about raw feeding and you know, to- Do exactly what you've done. Get in, if you've got a producer nearby, get in contact with them, mm. ask to go and see the facility, have a, t you know, have a talk to them. Um, it's, it's quite easy once you get your head around it. And, and also, if there are problems with raw feeding, if you've got a dog brought into your practice and, and there are problems with raw feeding and the, the diet isn't very good, you really need to educate yourself a little bit about the diet so that you can put, put people in the right direction. Mm. Because not all, everybody will go onto social media. Sure. Not everybody will actually, um, go to a pet shop to buy their raw food because raw food is accessible in the high street and the supermarket. Um, so they really think, oh, raw food, right, I'll start feeding my dog this, this, mm. this and this. Mm. You know, so if vets mm. really educated themselves, they mm. could say, no, so you have, you really should be feeding four or five different proteins. You should be feeding fish, oily fish. You should be feeding raw eggs with a shell on. It's quite funny to watch a dog try and break open a raw egg with a shell on. I suggest if you're gonna do it, do it in the garden. So it, it would be brilliant if vets could advise their 
patience to do this. So it's just be a bit mm. more open-minded, really. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the second uh, sort of a conception would be um, people think that raw feeding, number one, is more expensive. Uh, and just expand a little bit, and then also just uh, talk to us a little bit. What, what's what's is if it's okay with what, what's the profit margin like as a producer for? Well, a, I'm nowhere near <laughs> profit margin. Nowhere near kibble. Mm. Um, a lot of protein that goes into kibble is just feathers. I, I don't know if you knew that, but if you watch kibble being made, it's just a husk with everything sprayed on the outside. Mm -hmm. There are some good quality kibbles or better quality kibbles out there. Raw feeding is now more expensive than better quality kibbles. There are some really rubbish, rubbish kibbles um, that um, are cheap. But even if you put a little bit of fresh into your bowl, you know, if you if you can't, I can and I can I can understand not being able to afford it. If you can put a little bit of fresh food into your dog's bowl, that is all you need to do. But also, because of my food is because my food is British, it's sourced. I try to be as ethical as I possibly can. We do buy whole carcasses. It's going to cost more money. We're not by any means the most expensive producer on the market, um, but there are cheaper producers than I am. Than, than us so um you know you you find your mm. uh, and there's, there's some companies online uh who carry online and they sell 15 or 20 different producers raw food mm. so what you can do is you can mix and match mm. you can you know you can you you set yourself a budget and you can mix and match there's one called steph's pet pantry and there's one um raw feeding supplies in cardiff so they are really two big producers in this country, or two big suppliers rather, in this country that sell lots of different brands and they carry her out. Um, and as I, as I said, you, you just try and get your budget to where, mm. to where you can. But it, it, it's not as cheap as the cheapest kibble, but it's no more expensive than the most expensive kibble. Uh, think, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I think we're looking at more, more in terms of, I think we have to change our mindset to not look at the cost, but look at the value, isn't it? Because yeah, I know, but cost is important to a lot of people. Let's yeah. let's face it, cost is important. And as I said, if you can just put a little bit of fresh in your dog's bowl, I don't advise feeding kibble and raw in the same meal. If you want to feed kibble and raw, and you feed two meals a day, mm -hmm. then feed kibble in the morning, raw in the evening, or the other way around. You That's interesting. We'd like to expand on that. Why? Why, why do you? Well. <clears throat> For one reason, you always used to be said that kibble would digest at a slower rate than, than mm. raw food. Although, there's not a lot of studies on raw food. Mm. And I don't now believe, I did seven years ago, I don't now believe that that is necessarily 100% true. I can understand where it comes from, mm. um, but I always say don't feed it in the same meal because if your dog has a tummy upset, now, I'm sorry, I'm gonna say, say this to you. If your dog has a tummy upset and mm. you fed kibble and raw in the same mm. meal, and you go to the vet saying, my dog has a tummy upset, mm. your vet, if he's not open-minded, will mm. always say, that's your raw food. Cool. So I say, feed it in two separate meals. Mm. If your dog does ever have a tummy upset, and kibble-fed dogs get tummy upsets mm. as well, mm. then, I just think it's just a better thing, really. Mm. And also, if you're feeding kibble and raw in the same meal, mm. your dog might not eat the kibble. Mm. You might just pick the raw out and think, I don't want that. Mm. <laughs> you know, so if you feed it in two separate mm. meals and he knows he's just got kibble in that bowl, then yeah, mm. he's going to eat it. Mm. You know? That has been very, very interesting. Yeah. Uh, talk to us a little bit. How do you view the? Let's you know. Let's you know. We know raw food has been around for quite some time, but totally blown out in Forever. the last like, five, <laughs> five, ten years. There's much, much more, you no, know, more, more sort of a highlighting on it, information on it, and people are doing it more. But more companies are being set up. Yeah. How do you see the future? Five, ten years down the road, how do you see the future of raw food becoming? Um. Just more. I don't think the likes of Purina would take on raw food. 
because it the profit margins that they are used to mm. won't be the same. Mm. This is a living for me. I'm not, you know, I might sell between 12 and 20 tons a week, but with all my uh, outgoings and the cost mm. of my raw food, I don't make, mm. make a lot of money, I must admit. I'm actually the lowest that. paid member in the company. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, it, it, it's, I just think that it's going to get more popular as more people find it more accessible. And p if people learn that it's not messy, it's not dirty, you haven't got to chop loads of liver and lungs up and, and, and you know, it's all, you can get pre-prepared minces and we do chunky minces as well. We don't, as our minces, as you know, they're all mixed by hand and they're all packed by hand because it's really chunky mince, um, not mush like some minces are. Dogs wanted that experience, they're having a bit of a, chew as well you know um not that dogs really chew but um so i do think as it's more accessible it will get more popular and hopefully more people will feed raw mm, okay that's been very very useful so joe for our audience if they want to get in touch with you and find out more about this is there a where, where, where will you direct them to website okay um www thedogsbutcher.co.uk so We'll put it in the notes as well. But yeah. I can't remember my phone number. <laughs> That's fine. I presume that they the get phone number is on, is on, yeah, is on the website. That's fine. Um, yeah, so, I'll make yeah. Sure, I'll make sure it's in the show notes. That's not a problem. Um, thank you very much, Joe. That was very, very uh, interesting and certainly provided a lot of value for all of us. Really, I learned a lot. I know I learned a lot by talking to you and being in facility as well. So, Thank you very much for that. Thank and you. I look forward to invite you, you know, few next in future and see where you got onto with the empire of your oh, you're, dog food. You're always welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank no you. No worries. <laughs>